May I express my extreme joy and distinct honor to have been included in the Ithaca Institute March 2016 expedition to Nepal. This international scientifically based open source knowledge network served to interface research and practice in the application of biochar to agricultural and forestry practices in Nepal. In addition to my intent to document biochar production, tree planting, development of research plots, indigenous microorganism culture, and essential oil production, uh, this video offers snapshots that include the reality of the city of Kathmandu, the Nepalese countryside, agricultural practices, and a touch of human culture including uh, Nepalese cuisine and Nepalese dance. Airline travel halfway around the world poses significant challenges. From Rochester uh, through Chicago, uh, thanks to Kathleen Draper, the stalwart leader, the three New Yorkers made it uh, through Abu Dhabi. Uh, would like to have spent some time gawking at the desert there, phenomenal airport. On to Kathmandu, 23 hours later, found ourselves the next morning in an absolutely gorgeous hotel bed and breakfast facility uh, complete with gardens uh, and, a, and, a, and a peaceful quiet. I thought we would uh, ex experience some Nepalese cuisine uh, but was surprised and actually delighted to get an American breakfast. The core group of scientists, activists and students uh, from Germany, Serbia, uh, Switzerland, Tasmania, <laughs> and the United States gathered for a wonderful week of sharing. Uh, the walking tour of the city of Kathmandu revealed uh, quite a range of impressions initially. Solar-powered street lights, uh, traffic control signals that lacking electricity didn't do much good at all. The first major stop was a, <coughs> a craft uh, show the locals uh, producing goods, fair trade, uh, beautiful items, intricate wood carving, something very typical of Kathmandu. Couldn't help but uh, photograph a procession of some sort. I have no idea what this was all about, but uh, characteristic of the thriving activity of the city of Kathmandu. Earthquake damage became evident uh, on our initial walking tour. Many of the temples um, were damaged. The Patan Museum celebrates a unique blend of Hinduism and Buddhism that has existed in Nepal for thousands of years. There are some Christian and Muslim components as well. The surrounding area, uh, applied by vendedores uh, and <laughs> characterized by not uh, gray squirrels, uh, but rhesus monkeys that are uh, frightfully tame. The practice of human cremation on funeral pyres is an ongoing <laughs> practice in Nepal. Uh, this serves as quite a, a featured tourist attraction. The uh, balconies are lined with folks who pay the equivalent of eight American dollars to see the process of cremation. This is within a large park area, um, uh, replete with uh, folks uh, who uh, are one way or another earning themselves a living. Uh, and a celebration of the many gods of the Hinduism uh, uh, religious practice. 
current political stability in a democratic government make Nepal and Kathmandu uh, uh, apparently very safe? I felt unthreatened here and throughout the entire country. Uh, Kathmandu is a large city, uh, more than a million. The total population of uh, Nepal is approaching 30 million. They're the only country uh, that, uh, the first country actually, that had a national population policy. Uh, and uh, although the city is growing very rapidly at 6% per year, um, the entire country is at about the replacement rate and should uh, remain within the ability of the land to sustain it. Uh, the traffic, uh, pedestrian, uh, Bicycle, motor scooter, motorcycle uh, is extreme. <laughs> uh, everybody drives on the wrong side of the road, uh, which is disconcerting. I had no desire to be driving myself. Folks here uh, seem to drive. Uh, uh, I'm surprised the horns don't wear out. Um, Taxi driver knows the shortcuts and takes us through. Of course, the uh, the cows are sacred and uh, they're tolerated uh, everywhere you go, and they are everywhere. Cab driver stopped uh, kindly for this this creature. These, everybody along the roadside seems to be selling something. Uh, I suspect that this is the major source of of uh, produce uh, marketing. Beautiful displays uh, and very clearly quite a variety of healthy vegetables. Handmade flower necklaces seem to be a Nepalese tradition. I was fascinated with the uh, amount of work done by hand, by human power alone. Um, I would suspect that as much transportation throughout the entire country is accomplished by folks carrying things. These wicker baskets uh, serve as huge cargo uh, lugging devices uh, full of bricks or full of water. Uh, the bicycle in all of its various permutations is something that um, is indeed an efficient form of transportation, but one doesn't usually think of bikes as being uh, heavy cargo carriers. <clears throat> Fascinated with the economy pickup truck, the garden tractor with a, a trailer. These are quite common. The electric buses, uh, little three-wheel jobs, uh, battery-powered, um, are everywhere. Little little ladybugs running around. Carry ten people jammed in the back there, five on a side. Vehicles in uh, Nepal do not seem to be of the new variety. They uh, typically are used, <laughs> coming from India in large part. Could not uh, fathom the wiring system. Apparently there are no electric meters in Nepal. This system of wires, one going to every dwelling, uh, is extraordinarily dangerous. I would hate to have to be the lineman working on this. Pollution uh, in Nepal is extreme. Um, trash accumulates in the street and is ignited, burned. Uh, this probably was less of a problem when paper dominated the trash disposal uh, contents, but now plastic does, and the odor of burning plastic permeates the city air. Trash uh, is everywhere. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of, there are no trash barrels, there doesn't appear to be any trash collection. It's piled and burned in the street and eventually it's picked up and hauled away. But uh, I did my master's thesis on littering behavior modification. Uh, it wouldn't have worked here in Nepal. The rainy season, the gutters uh, fill with water. Uh, at other times they are convenient repositories for garbage. The cultural expectation. The consequence of this is pretty dismal air quality. Part particle masks are worn by a significant proportion of the people uh, and I expect that the uh, respiratory health of the
population in general is not good in Kathmandu. Uh, water supplies are contaminated. Uh, the earthquake, which occurred in April of 2015, the buildings are held up with, with beams almost uh, universally. Uh, the areas where buildings have collapsed and probably every third building was totally destroyed in that earthquake. These open areas serve uh, as temporary homes for folks. The rebuilding process is underway. Uh, brick piles occur everywhere. Uh, the steel reinforcing rod, huge piles of that apparently to encourage folks to rebuild. I'm a little skeptical about the Nepalese uh, building codes to see a 15-story bamboo structure. Is Traveling through uh, rural Nepal, uh, river flow, uh, rivers are abundant. Plenty of water coming off the highlands. Rafting, kayaking, very popular tourist activities. Pairs of trees appear everywhere, well maintained, apparently symbolize the sanctity of marriage. The terraced hillsides of Nepal have been continuously inhabited for 6,000 years. Uh, they're used today with varying crops, uh, the highlands uh, uh, going into corn, which is not an ideal crop. Um, the rivers uh, providing water are used uh, by folks for washing. Uh, the same water is carried home for drinking and cooking. Uh, low areas, uh, suitable for rice culture, are hand-formed into these multitude of terraces and processed uh, for rice planting. I'm not sure exactly what the oxen are doing dragging this flat board across the surface which will soon be seeded to rice. You can see a gentleman seeding it right there. Uh, these, wherever there is low uh, floodplain land, uh, these rice paddies are are prevalent. Hand seeding of rice, probably more common, the hand planting of rice sets. It takes these gals about a second to uh, put one of these little starts in, uh, and many hundreds of thousands of hectares are planted by hand in this manner. You can see the fruits of hand labor. Uh, this is an amazing process to watch. Uh, the upper elevations are, are tilled uh, by oxen. Uh, this wooden plowshare is uh, an antique implement if ever there was one, but uh, you use what you have. High elevations, uh, different crops occur here. Perennial crops are becoming more prevalent and apparently more sustainable rice straw. Uh, there must be a shortage of roofing nails in Nepal. Most of the tin roofs are held down with a layer of rocks. Many of the buildings are stone and clearly not very earthquake resistant. And through the small towns uh, domestic animals are abundant. I'm not really sure why a herd of goats should be accompanied by a monkey on a leash. One particularly prosperous uh, town and farm, in fact, uh, had an extensive collection of, of uh, bee honey production. I'm not uh, a beekeeper myself, and the uh, ease with which <laughs> these combs are handled, shaking the bees off, no protection on his hands, apparently they're not aggressive. Uh, we really did enjoy feasting on that honey. Uh, the Kantiki kilns are a m huge part of the agricultural development in rural Nepal. Uh, these kilns produce uh, biochar, pyrolyzed organic material, often wood, but it can be any organic material, cooked in such a manner, burned in such a manner that uh, oxygen is excluded from a large portion of the fuel. The volatiles are driven off and the charcoal left over uh, serves as a superior 
soil additive. There's an entire science an agricultural practice based on biochar. These Kantiki kilns are constructed in a uh, relatively specific manner. Uh, they're about two meters across and a meter deep. Uh, and often uh, plastered with adobe on the sides and once they're fired the adobe um, hardens up. Uh, here's the adobe in the mixing process. Uh, this is fed uh, into the kiln and this spread and smoothed provides superior airflow and burning characteristics. Fuels of any sort, fine sticks in this case, but larger material, or for that matter, uh, agricultural waste products. Uh, kids get right into it as well. It's uh, everybody loves fire. Well, a lot of people love fire. I love fire. Now I take them over to the Once the material is pyrolyzed, it's extinguished before it completely combusts to ash. Uh, this in so itself is the char, which is used uh, in many applications, mixed with manure, uh, urine uh, from the cattle is saved uh, and mixed. This combination of compost, soil, and char serves as a strong enhancement for uh, agroforestry, uh, growing fruit trees on these terraces, which uh, will provide a, a sustainable and perennial product. The agricultural practices are pretty intense. Uh, various <laughs> varieties of, of legumes of soil improving materials are uh, utilized and a great deal of research in, in the case of uh, Branda, uh, Brandapur and 120 other Nepalese villages associated with this Ithaca Institute. Research plots where various treatments of urine, uh, biochar, uh, compost, and various plants uh, are the impact, the effect uh, the, is recorded very carefully. The scientific application of this is to enhance uh, productivity um, and indeed you've got to keep good records. Uh, the uh, indigenous <coughs> microorganism uh, program uh, developed by uh, one of the scientists here enhances the microbial health of the soil by using local microbes. This apparently is a huge boost to the productivity and something that is making a, a tremendous difference in the uh, ability of these areas to sustain themselves. One uh, practice is to extract essential oils. Uh, in this case, uh, folks gathered by hand kilogram after kilogram of cinnamon leaves. Uh, these are fed into a, a steam extracting uh, container and is crushed. Uh, uh, additional leaves uh, uh, to the capacity of this container are, are put in a huge quantity to be sure. Uh, once the fire is ig ignited underneath this device, the steam goes through the pipe into a condenser uh, and is collected in the form of oil. Anand, Anand Pokhrel, uh, the uh, Nepalese engineer in charge of this operation, the gentleman in the blue shirt, is also very instrumental in overseeing the construction of the roundhouses. The oil is separated in this device and sold at very high value. Uh, the extracted uh, uh, liquid is also very functional. The elegantly simple structures uh, d called roundhouses created by uh, uh, arranging plastic bags filled with clay and then pounded into place. Uh, this particular one in Brandapur is similar to the one cons being constructed in Ratanpur where we spent most of our time. Uh, the gals carrying in uh, clay, a, a trip after trip, load after load, 40, 50 pounds a sack, 
Uh, this will be used as adobe to fill the spaces between the plastic bags, uh, mixing it up as a, as a mud basically and applying it to the walls. Um, serves to smooth out the structure and, and uh, reduce infiltration. It's delightful to see these gals work. Uh, they obviously are having fun um, and uh, willing to work uh, wonderfully hard. The bamboo nails driven into the clay sacks uh, serve to hold the adobe in place. Uh, I had the good fortune uh, of staying in a right, new roundhouse. Right. At first, thatch roof uh, leak, a heavy rain soaked my sleeping bag and clothes, but no matter, a neighbor took me in while my things dried. These roundhouses do provide excellent quality living spaces. They're earthquake resistant, made from low cost local materials by locally sourced labor. When I learned that the Nepalese woodworkers use a two-person cross-cut saw to hand rip saw logs in the forest into quarters small enough for resawing into lumber, I offered to share some of my own expertise with chainsaws. I purchased a steel MS-362 to donate to the Ithaca Institute and with American Airlines approval shipped this in my luggage to Kathmandu. This saw would produce beams or quarter logs many times faster than the hand-operated saw. Much to my dismay, the computerized carburation system failed and the saw quit running. A smaller saw owned by the Institute functioned well enough for me to teach two of the Nepalese carpenters how to construct furniture. In the final analysis, the lack of availability of repair parts, bar oil, two-cycle engine oil, and even gasoline in the remote Nepalese villages renders intensive chainsaw impractical. I did drain and dry the saw of all fluids and packed it in my luggage. My duffel without the chainsaw arrived in Rochester with a note from the Transportation Safety Administration informing me that the hazardized item had been confiscated. The Nepalese uh, process fuel wood for cooking, largely. I suppose sometimes they use it for heat. Um, uh, the cooking is done in, in outdoor ovens uh, using uh, three to half, three and a half foot meter long lengths of, uh, of wood cut laboriously by hand, occasionally with a saw, but most often with some form of a knife or hatchet. Uh, the ends are multiple blows. Uh, these, these wood stoves <clears throat> uh, really help to create the pollution situation uh, and could be done much more efficiently if it were for uh, stoves. Uh, verifies the uh, efficacy of human power in Nepal. Delightful. Uh, meals uh, in Nepal, uh, largely vegetarian. Uh, I don't believe that when well, we were at Ratampur, we had any meat served to us. The vegetarian diet is extraordinarily healthy, extraordinarily healthy. <clears throat> the Nepalese are a slender uh, population entirely. I, I did not observe but two people in all of my travels that I would consider obese. Uh, the <clears throat> roasted peanuts and cilantro are a favorite hors d'oeuvre. Uh, fry breads of, of all manner uh, graced our Masala. meals. Masala. Uh, the uh, deep fried vegetables, uh, ravioli uh, <clears throat> in contexture, and all manner of, of, of breads, uh, vegetables, the uh, good presentation of, of fresh, green, uh, delicious, <laughs> properly cooked items uh, yeah. made the culinary part of this trip delightful. Breakfast with fresh fruit, uh, cereal, and some form of, of yogurt uh, were absolutely delightful. I, <clears throat> I didn't partake of the vegetables for breakfast, but they were available. <clears throat> the, the staff, friendly, uh, helpful, delightfully happy, it seemed. Um, did all of the cooking and washed uh, 
all of the dishes for us. It was indeed a, a convenient and comfortable trip. Our award ceremony uh, toward the end of the stay at uh, Ratampur, a delightful experience. Uh, these folks were eternally grateful and very sincerely thankful for all that we attempted to do. The group, a classic photo, and that evening, uh, in the absence of electrical power with poor lighting for photography, uh, we experienced the uh, delightful celebration of uh, Nepalese dance, uh, Nepalese music, and the uh, very appropriate display of technique and style so unique uh, to the country of Nepal. There was a, a band uh, imported for the purpose, uh, uh, horns consisting of a, a three foot diameter tubes with uh, a, a really less than euphonious sound, but boy, they were uh, certainly a, a neat experience. Can't say that it was uh, my concept of, of, uh, <laughs> of harmonious music, but uh, enjoyable nevertheless. The uh, Patik Foundation, uh, I feel I must acknowledge the very powerful impression Topendra Kanal, a meditation instructor, and Anand Pokharel, whom we have met, made upon me during our time in Nepal together. These two individuals epitomize in my mind the fruition of my own search for conscious awareness, minimal stress, and inner peace. They're focused on meditation. Uh, uh, I was provided with a short meditation lesson which summarized all that I knew. Uh, their lands, their grounds, their agricultural procedures, which are part of the physical training, are provide a sufficiency of, of food and produce that supports them and provides a surplus saleable uh, in the Kathmandu markets. Uh, the tomato uh, 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 vines uh, in, in hothouses produced a million rupees, a hundred thousand dollars of income. The cattle uh, providing uh, uh, precious dairy products uh, were utilized tremendously. The urine collected, the feces collected, and composted uh, in a methane generator which provided 70 percent of the energy for the uh, facility. Uh, to be tremendously clean, sparkly, stainless steel kitchen with restricted entry. The uh, facilities were, were clean uh, and effective. The grounds uh, absolutely beautifully decorated. The meditation hall, the gathering hall, uh, a superb example of, of place conducive to appreciation and peace and solitude. The classrooms themselves, uh, an education of the body, of the mind, of uh, both of intellectual and spiritual, uh, were superbly executed in my mind. Uh, this, to me, uh, was a phenomenal experience. And so we end uh, our journey to Nepal. This experience vastly expanded my own understanding and appreciation of place and human culture. The reality of life in Kathmandu, the low-tech human and animal-powered existence in rural communities, the incredibly warm hospitality of the people and the striking beauty of the total landscape provided an immeasurable and permanent enrichment to my own being.